Hi, Gary Chinnerworth here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to life at the Christmas range. Well, it's a little bit cold here today, it's snow on the ground. And to be honest with you, I was going to do something different today, but because of the weather, um, we can't really get out down to Moreland District. So I thought we'd do something that I've been planning on doing all year, but not really got around to it. We're going to have a look at the Webley Mark VI be honest with you, one of my favourite pistols. Um, I don't do a huge amount with pistols, but this, this is a proper air pistol. Accurate? No, not really. Um, but it's made of metal. It's got the grips. It was built from the original patterns from the Webley Mark VI, made by Umarex. It takes shells, which you load with BBs or with air gun pellets. And it looks and feels like the real thing. Now I'm lucky, I, back in the day, many, many years ago, I used to work for London Underground and this was before the, the gun ban. And I was lucky enough to shoot an original Webley Mark VI in 455, I think it was. And this reminds me of exactly how that felt. It's a wonderful, <laughs> replica um feels like the right thing so let's have a shoot also what we're going to do is we're going to have a look back at 2022 and we're going to talk about a few things that went on a few things that i enjoyed and answer a few questions as we go along so enough of me waffling let's get on with the webley mark six okay so the webley mark six made by Umarex, obviously an air pistol, shoots on 177s or BBs, and they are loaded into these cartridges. Got a little rubber insert that you push your pellets into. They work on the good old fashioned 12 gram CO2, and all that does is it fits into the cap at the back. You unscrew the lanyard holder, put that in, screw that in, and then you're, it will pierce the top of the thing, uh, top of the uh, the cylinder, and that puts air into the gum. That's now loaded. So if you cock it, it will fire. Now a question came up the other day: What is it with CO2 using in the cold? Well, obviously CO2 is an oxidised gas. Sorry about that. Someone was at the door. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, right. CO2 in the cold. Now, I'm no physicist. I, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% on the, the physics of this. But basically, as we all know, you've got a triple point with, uh, with you know, difference between a liquid, a gas, and a solid. Now, a CO2 caplet is stored, and because of the temperature of the gas, it's triple point, it's very, very close to freezing when it's inside anyway. That's why you'll use a CO2 fire extinguisher. And if you put your hand in front of the extinguisher, you'll get freezer burn on your hand. Well, if it's incredibly cold outside, and this is near freezing anyway, if it gets really, really cold, it starts moving from a gas to a liquid. And that will really drop the pressure within the CO2 caplet. Now, I've spoken to some people who shoot these things a lot and what they do is quite simple they have a couple of the you know the the heater packs you can get or things like that and they keep them in their pockets with the co2 bulbs they keep their co2 bulbs warm then when they take it out they slip it into the gun they fire it and then they either holster their rifle next to a heating pack basically keep the gun warm keep your co2 warm and then it should work absolutely fine but if you've got a co2 caplet and you're out on a really cold day and it's sub-zero it's going to be changing from a gas to a liquid and you're going to lose all your pressure so basically keep your co2 warm keep your gun warm okay so we've got gas within the gun and then to load it you just push that lever down break the barrel and then you can either take your cartridges out or just take your pellets 
and load. Let's put a couple in. <sighs> While we're doing this, we're hoping on Boxing Day to have another one of our Christmas videos. And this one, if, we're pl if everything goes to plan, we're going to Malden District Air Gun Club and we're going to see how far we can shoot a PCP and a Springer. And we're hopefully going to go out and beyond 200 yards. Sorry, 200 yards? No, 100 yards. 200 yards would be a bit much. So that's hopefully going to be released at 3 o'clock on Boxing Day. So long-range air rifles. Okay, so we've got six pellets in the gun. And let's just do three rounds rapid fire. Well, not that rapid. Now, as you can see, it's a double action pistol. That means when you pull the trigger, the hammer comes back and it fires. But if you want to shoot it more accurately, you can shoot it single action. You can pull the hammer back, you can cock it. That makes the trigger considerably lighter. And off we go. Six rounds. Single action is always more accurate because you're not pulling the trigger as far. As you can see from here, the trigger blade is quite a long way forward. And to pull it all the way through, I've shot six, so I know the gun is unloaded. There we go. Whereas if we cock it, you see that the trigger is actually coming backwards. And now the trigger is almost always almost fully back. So now all you need is a slightest of touch. And off we go. Single action, much more accurate. So let's put a target out downrange and see what kind of accuracy we can get from the Umarex Webley Mark 6. Okay, so we're loaded up with six rounds and let's see how we go. Rain fade. Slightly concerned, I've got my new camera down there and I haven't actually shot this before. So I'm hoping I'm not gonna shoot my camera. Okay, that went quite high on top of the paper. Same there again. And again. That went low. All right, let's try it single action. Okay, well, we're out at about 12 yards, and I must admit, the accuracy there is not that great. But I think that's probably me and not the gun. Let's give that another try. As I said, it's a, I have not shot this pistol in a long, long time. Oh, something we thought we'd have a little chat about is what we're going to do next year. Is there anything you would particularly like me to look at? Anything you particularly like me to go over? A lot of you really enjoyed the video I did with the powder burners down at West London Rangers. Sorry, no, uh, sorry, West London Ranges. Um, shooting the, 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 the Mauser and the Rigby and the... Uh, the, the amazing 308s and 306s really enjoyed that would you like me to do more of that please say yes because i would love to do more than that more of that okay let's go see if we can go top left okay Okay, so that's slightly better. We seem to be getting slightly better as we shoot. Um, as I said, the, this is something, shooting pistols is not easy. Now, one thing that we do have to talk about is, in my view, pistols, I wouldn't say they're dangerous, but if you're thinking of getting one and you've got youngsters and you think, oh, a pistol 
will be much easier to teach a child with. I understand where you're coming from. They're lovely and light and they're easy to use and they're easy to shoot. But with a rifle, if a child is pointing a rifle down range, it's very controllable and it's hard for them to move around. Whereas if they've got a pistol and somebody says something, they go, what are you saying, Dad? And all of a sudden, it is very easy to move around and to sweep people. So if you're going to teach someone with a pistol, obviously you've got to do it on a range. Always keep behind them maybe with shoulder on their back you know this is a youngster but be very aware that it's very easy for them to lose control of where the pistol is pointing love pistols but they are inherently a lot of people are killed with pistols certainly in america right let's go lower down Well, I'll be honest with you. Still got one in there. I think a lot of this is, I think the cold is actually affecting the CO2 because I shot this back in the summer and it was considerably more accurate than this. And this is what I've been told to expect in the cold. If you notice, a lot of my shots are actually up and down. They're, they're relatively straight. They're not left or right. But it seems like the cold is affecting the power going up and down. And that is exactly what I've been told to expect with CO2 in the cold. Now, let's say, beautiful pistol, but I think we need to warm it up a bit. One thing we are going to do next year is, as I've stated many, many times, I've sucked a bit this year with my shooting. I've had a few health problems. Um... But my shooting has just not been that good. So what we're going to do starting in January is we are going to completely deconstruct the way that I shoot. We're going to look at the guns. We're going to look at the hold. We're going to look at pretty much everything, you know, positions, the way I shoot, the way I hold the rifle. And we're going to completely relearn building up to the World Championships in September. I'm hoping that's something you will enjoy. I've also been asked if we could do a few more reviews. Now, I don't want to be sitting at a table going, oh, you know, this is the Umarex. <laughs> That's not me. So what we're going to be trying to do is arranging to meet up with people on the circuit who've got interesting guns. Um, we're not going to be looking at the newest stuff, although I have possibly made an arrangements to get my hands on the new XTI 50. Um, Thanks to Adrian, um, a wonderful chap um, who's getting one hopefully in the new year. And he's been very kind and has said that we can meet up on the range and I'll get to have a play with it. And that's the new air arms rifle. Really excited about that. But I think we're going to try and look at some classics. We're going to see if we can get a Day State Mark III. We're obviously going to do an air arms S400. Um, I know some people have got some absolutely brilliant guns in their cupboards. So we're going to try and get them to come out and we're going to we're going to look at some some retro rifles. So if there is anything you would particularly like me to look at or if you've got a really interesting rifle and you can meet me somewhere on the circuit, either be the UK HFT, Southern Hunters or if you can get down to Malden or Cambridge or somewhere like that, somewhere where we can meet up um, on one of the Sunday shoots. And you're happy to hang around afterwards and we can do a video together i would more than happily have you guys as part you know of part of the show it'd be better than just looking at me waffling on at the camera um let's load up a few more and uh let's see if we can chuck a couple more down range we'll get some more pellets oh while i'm doing that <sighs> a lot of you have pistols and pelly cases are expensive i picked this up at a car boot file sale um it's for an old power drill um i think the guy wanted two quid for it considerably better than going to buy an expensive case uh, from a gun shop 
although support your gun shops uh, they are really important because when they're gone they're gone and they won't come back just chuck those in there using AA fields um, great pellet oh well I hope you've all got your Christmas plans sorted you've all been nice to Santa and he's gonna bring you something nice right okay six rounds right go on the right hand side I started off low, same aim point, and they're all going high. Okay, well, that's not a bad group. Let's put another six down there. Those of you who do actually shoot pistols, tell me what I'm doing wrong, because I'm sure I'm doing stuff wrong. In the new year, one thing we are going to look at is I've got an Umarex Desert Eagle, which we're going to have a bit of fun with. Also, I've got an uh, SMK pre-charged pneumatic air pistol that's scoped because places like Mile Oak, they do a competition called Pistol HFT. So we're going to go down to Malden where they've got some uh, a pistol range and we're going to play with some proper accurate pistols not that this isn't accurate but this is a blinking pistol it's a fun pistol all right let's go in that same group Well, actually, that group's starting to tighten up a bit now. Maybe it's because I'm holding the pistol in my hand. It's keeping it warm. I'm not sure, but we'll put another six in. But it's definitely starting to tighten up. Um, did actually have a question. Why about how am I getting on with my compressor? Um, the compressor's going really well. Um, I haven't had a, an issue with it. Um, one thing... There was a thing come out that all over the internet a while back, the Vivor compressors, not the one that I've got, but the 12 volt ones that you can plug into your car um, or you can plug into your wall socket that runs off 12 volt. Um, it's not the ones that runs on water, it's the little square box one. I'll, I'll put a picture up. There's been a safety recall that's been issued by the government. So I'll put a notice to the recall up uh, here. That's the number. Just go on to gov.yoco.dovgot.com dove dove gov.co.uk put in this number and have a look to see whether or not it responds to your compressor if you've got one um just check it out apparently there's something to do with the power converter but have a look i've spoken to a couple of people about them and vivo have given them um a uh, a refund and things like apparently vivo have been absolutely superb they're aware of it there won't be an issue um so check into that um, but no, the compressor that I've got, the one that runs on water, um, I, I've not had any issues with it. Um, I did find it struggles with a, with a 12 litre, filling it all the way up to like 300 bar, it struggles. So I'm filling them up to about 280. Same with the three litre bottles, filling them up to about 280, doing it a little bit more regular. But you keep them cold, um, do it in batches of 20 minutes, let it cool down, do it again. And I've not had an issue. As long as you keep the oil changed, They've been absolutely superb. Right, okay, let's go into the middle of the paper. Cool, that one went high. Okay, Can you, did you hear that last one? Okay, I think the gas is nearly going. Right, so we're nice and empty, and now we want to 
change the, the bulb or get rid of the bulb never leave these in the pistol so just unscrew so a little puff and now it comes the cylinder can recycle them and it does actually say warning remove seal capsule when storing for long periods the other thing is with these when you purchase them you can get lubricant to put on the top because otherwise your seals will get brittle uh, i think it's napier is the lubricant you can get also i purchased 50 of these co2 bulbs i think from amazon for about 12 pounds um absolutely fine well that's pretty much it for the for the webley mark six a lot of fun to shoot shooting a paper um i think the accuracy the poor accuracy is down to me and down to the weather but let's see if we can get better with a pistol let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover next year we've had a wonderful here year here on the range um you've all been wonderful thank you for all the really kind comments um and i look forward to seeing you on boxing day with our long range shooting of Maldon district and let's see how far we can shoot have a wonderful christmas and a brilliant new year and we'll see you all again on the range very very soon Ta-da!